few things infuriate me more than hearing things like this. You can't prove the age of the Earth, so you can never prove it's old. So there is no hypothetical. <laughs> or this. Evolution not taught as a sincere theory of biologists, but rather, Mr. Speaker, taught as fact. Or f this. Climate change is still disputed by expert. Why are we teaching it in schools as a scientific fact? It's but it's, it's just a theory, a like gravity. It's just a theory. Jesus H. Christ, people. This is a pretty common problem when it comes to scientific literacy, whereby people confuse a theory with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is just a guess. That's it. Nothing more. When most people say, well, that's only a theory. What they actually mean is whatever you are saying is merely a hypothesis. It's just a guess. Where's the evidence? This is what people mean when they try to refute the theory of evolution, climate change, the theory of general relativity, germ theory of disease, and so on and so forth. Most hypotheses are aborted midterm and thrown into the dumpsters of history like a prom night baby. However, some get love, care, training, and actually evolve like Pokemon, until they become the seed that creates a new theory. A theory is a hypothesis that has been tested, either through experimentation or observation, thoroughly, and provides evidence that the hypothesis is correct. But even here, we are only in the adolescence of the evolution of a theory. You see, your pimple-faced teenage hypothesis that you've tested on your own has to go to theory of high school where it will be viciously challenged by scientists. Especially nerds like Carl. Fuck you, Carl, falsifying ass bitch. Yet the horrors of Theoria High School are necessary. Not only must a hypothesis be tested and proven true by the original guesser, but the hypothesis also has to be retestable by others. If other scientists cannot duplicate your results, then the hypothesis is probably wrong, or it was improperly tested. This is how we can determine whether your hypothesis can produce objective results available for all to retest, or are just merely subjective results. It's only after multiple retests by different scientists getting the same results that consensus among the scientific community begins to form. At this point, your hypothesis has evolved into a theory. Oh look, he has little hypothesis babies all his own. Aren't they so cute? A hypothesis that has been rigorously tested and proven correct and is accepted by the majority of the scientific community. This is essentially the Charizard of educated guesses. Albert Einstein published his hypothesis of general relativity in 1915, that gravity is actually the curvature of space-time created by massive objects. He had shown mathematically how this was so, but there weren't any empirical observations to support this, until 1919 when British astronomers Frank Watson Dyson and Arthur Stanley Eddington took pictures of a solar eclipse in Brazil that showed how light was being bent by the gravitational force of the sun. As recently as 2017, not a single experiment has falsified Einstein's theory. Now that is a sexy ass theory. To be clear, even if a hypothesis fails, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because it tells us what not to do next. Thomas Edison had 1,000 failed hypotheses before the 1,001th gave him a working device that could harness electricity to produce light, the light bulb. And this hypothesis has been retested and augmented to the point where we know multiple ways to create light bulbs and have a veritable theory of how to make light bulbs. Anyway, this is a very simplified explanation of the difference between a theory and hypothesis and why being a mere theory is actually the opposite of a bad thing, but a great accomplishment for a fully evolved hypothesis. If you want a more detailed explanation, check out this video by It's Okay To Be Smart and please, Please, stop confusing and belittling theories. Like, share, subscribe, hit bell, or however your precious attention sounds like that.